I have noticed that one of my more popular videos recently has been my old video about the basics of the Klingon language, and it has gotten quite a bit of attention, including from the Klingon teacher from Germany, Levin Leitar. However, in the four years since I made it, not only have I learned how to actually pronounce Klingon words, the video itself has also gotten quite a bit dated. The Klingon Hall. So here's my reboot of the first episode of my old Klingon for Humans series, hopefully much better than the original and with not so much J.J. Abrams. For those of you who don't know anything about Klingon, Klingon is a fictional constructed language, or a conlang, created by Marco Grant to be the official language of the Klingons from Star Trek. Now, it may sound like an incoherent ramble of harsh guttural sounds, but it is still as rule-based and organized as any language on Earth. Now, I'm not going to teach you the big phrase and so many others have already covered that by now, nor will I cover how to pronounce each of the sounds, since I have already covered that by now. What I will do, however, is give you a brief, quick glimpse into how the grammar of the language works. First off, one core part of Klingon grammar is that Klingon is an agglutinative language, like Korean or Turkish. This means that you can often string sentences together into just one word, through prefixes and suffixes. Klingon prefixes are all used for identifying the subject and the object, though interestingly at the exact same time. So in English, if I were to hit you, I would say, I hit you, and you would probably quite reasonably say, ow, what the f- In Klingon, however, to hit is pip, yes, Klingon words are capitalized like that, deal with it. And if it were something I am doing to you, I would add the prefix ka, so I hit you becomes ka kip, you hit me becomes shul kip, etc. Here's a graph to make it easier to understand. By the way, if it's just you doing the action, just use this column on the furthest left, where the object is nothing. So for example, kong is to sleep, je kong is I sleep, the kong is you sleep, etc. Klingon uses a clever system of organizing its suffixes, involving numbering them into different categories. There are nine categories of Klingon suffixes, dealing with size, number, qualification, possession, syntactic markers, etc. Now, in most agglutinative languages, there are also a few examples of really long words to show how crazy it can get, and Klingon is certainly no different. One example is the phrase meaning due to your apparent minor errors. This one word sentence looks like a monster, but we can easily split it up and dissect it, as with all agglutinative languages. Krach refers to an error or a mistake. Chom is a type 1 diminutive suffix, which makes it a minor error. Chachom. Me is the plural suffix for anything not an intelligent being or a body part. Chachome, minor errors. Che means that something was apparent. Lij means that they belong to you and it wasn't something that uses language, like your friend or your brother. And mo means that it was due to that or something else had happened because of that. Simple. Klingon, when not mashing everything into just one word, has an interesting word order compared to English. The word order in Klingon is object, verb, subject, meaning that the object affected by the verb goes first, then the verb itself, and the subject causing the action goes last. This is the exact reverse of what it is in English, which can make it a bit confusing at first. So if I were to say the child follows the officer, it would come out as yash klapuk, which sounds like the officer is following the child, right? The way I get around this is by instead thinking the officer is followed by the child. Now that isn't exactly how it's supposed to work, but it's helpful when reversing word order from your native language. Klingon also has a series of suffixes called lingwitme, or rovers, which are suffixes with no set place in a word and can often go in different places depending on context. One great example of this is the suffix ku, which emphasizes whichever word or suffix came right before it. An example used in the official Klingon dictionary is the sentence bechokhvitbe, for we are not afraid to kill you. Yeah, Klingon, it's a charming bunch, am I right? Pe is the we to you suffix, choch means to kill, vip means to be afraid, and be negates vip, so vipbe means not afraid. Now, putting in ku, we can get bechokhvitbe ku, for we are not afraid to kill you, we are not afraid to kill you, or we are not afraid to kill you. Notice how English does not have this feature and therefore in order to emphasize something I have to say in a different tone. Conjunctions are also really interesting in Klingon. Things like and, and or, and or, since they don't work too differently from English when joining sentences. For example, bemoch ej krep duble. But it works a little differently when joining nouns, like in lists, as in 
as it comes after all the listed nouns. Not necessarily the last word in the sentence, but it comes after the list has already been completed. Finally, one important aspect of speaking like a Klingon is clipped Klingon, where some redundant prefixes and suffixes can be chopped off to make up for a shorter sentence. This is most common on the battlefield, where long, carefully crafted, elegant sentences aren't exactly efficient for giving quick orders. Sometimes you've just gotta get the job done. For example, we ya cha can be simply said as we cha. Chopping off the commanding prefix ye, you can also go from ji yaj chu to just yaj chu. Clips Klingon can also delete words, like from khashta ya cha to khashta. This is not exactly something that would bring a Klingon grammarian joy, but it's still understandable. But since the basic meaning is still intact, it's still understandable. Now, I can never cover all the aspects of Klingon in a video short enough for my channel, and well, then again, neither could Marco Grant's official Klingon dictionary, but to be honest, the Klingon dictionary still helps a lot. Seriously, buy it if you're interested in learning more about Klingon grammar. It does a really good job of explaining it. This video is not sponsored by it. Thanks for watching this video, and please let me know if I should make more of these Klingon for Humans videos again in the comments below. Also, let me know if there's anything important about Klingon grammar that I missed, if you spot anything. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to learn something new every Sunday, and follow me on Twitter at Canubis for new updates and stuff like that.